Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Vivian and today we're going to look at some interior design trends that are taking the world by storm in 2021. This is the second trend video I'm doing this year, so if you want to see the first one, it was uploaded back in January. This one's a pretty big deal because it's influencing so much of what we're seeing right now in the design world. A lot of the trends that we're going to look at today are actually coming from this postmodern revival. Postmodernism is a style that came about, in the interior design world at least, between about the 1970s and the 1990s, mainly as a rejection of modernism, or what we identify in the design world as mid-century modern. So we're seeing lots of curvy, sometimes amorphous and blobby shapes, which are the opposite of the very functional, sometimes a little rigid, mid-century pieces. Interestingly though, it's not all about organic forms because alongside all these curves, we're also seeing the use of very simple geometric shapes like spheres, arches, and cylinders, and that's the influence from the 80s. This trend is definitely not going to be everyone's cup of tea, but if you are a fan and you're interested in learning more, then definitely check out my video on how to decorate postmodern where I go a lot more in depth on the topic. After so many years of the drum lampshade, it's definitely fun to see the pleated lampshade making such a big comeback. Pleated lampshades were used throughout the 80s and 90s, but the father of the pleated lampshade trend that we're seeing today is the Bentwood floor lamp designed by Mads Caprani in 1970. But definitely don't stop just at floor lamps. Pleated lampshades can look great as sconces, table lamps, and as hanging pendants. The key to keeping the pleated lampshade looking fresh is definitely to get a contemporary base. So if you find a pleated shade, say, at your local thrift store, but you don't like the base, definitely don't be afraid to buy it anyways and just swap out the base for something a little more up-to-date that you like more. If you don't have any luck finding anything at your local thrift stores or flea markets, I've left a link in the description to a really cool Danish Etsy store that sells a variety of fantastic pleated shades. So be sure to check them out. The shop is run by two girls named Tina and Kate. If you're not digging the pleats, then you can always just go for a regular uh, flat empire shade, which basically just means that the lampshade is tapered, so it's narrower at the top and then it widens um, at the bottom. Right now, the trend seems to be that the more like angled and the more tapered it is, the better. While pieces from the 1950s and 60s, so like mid-century pieces, were quite sleek and linear, seating from the 1970s era definitely became bulkier and comfier. Early adopters such as Athena Calderon, I think set this trend in motion a few years back, but we're really starting to see it take hold now. And I think that's obviously due to the pandemic and the fact that so many of us are, you know, seeking to create cozier, comfier, more inviting homes. So it's really interesting to see how this trend has really taken hold because of that. Some people are incorporating actual vintage 70s sofas into their spaces, and let me tell you, that can get pricey. As a result, some pieces that were originally designed back then are actually now being re-released and are having a pretty big surge in popularity. A few examples of 70s sofas would be the Mario Bellini Camaleonda sofa, the Togo sofa, the Terrazza, and the Soriana, just to name a few. To quote Architectural Digest, they are the sofa's equivalent of sweatpants. Today's furniture designers are definitely taking cues from this decade so we're seeing a lot of soft cushy rounded shapes and a lot of sculptural accent chairs as well. This type of seating is definitely less formal than your standard mid-century modern sofa. It can also come a little lower to the ground which in turn means that we're seeing a lot of lower coffee tables as well with shorter legs. You can thank the 80s if you're seeing a lot of waves and squiggles and shapes like that pop up in the design and decor world lately. Of course, styles and trends are always renewing themselves, usually about every 30 years, but this repurposed version of the squiggle may very well be a result of the pandemic as well, as many claim that these shapes actually have a calming effect on them. Remember these 90s IKEA classics? These are cool again. We're seeing playful squiggles and waves in the form of lampshade bases, in furniture design, in product design, in textiles, artwork, ceramics. The squiggles are everywhere. Plaster is definitely having a moment, and we're seeing it in furniture, decor, like accessories, and in wall treatments. Now, obviously, plaster walls are not new. They're the predecessors of today's drywall, but they're making a comeback. Plaster walls are actually an environmentally friendly alternative to paint. The effect of a plaster wall can be quite beautiful, creating almost like a delicate sun-dappled effect that brings depth and richness into a space, whereas your standard painted drywall can sometimes feel a little bit flat. And just to clarify, we're not going for the 90s sponge wall Look. Although admittedly, 
It could be that in 30 years, plaster walls from the 2020s also look very ridiculous. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. Plaster walls are more expensive than painted drywall since they require multiple coats, but they're also typically longer lasting. I don't know if you've noticed, but fluting is everywhere. Kitchen islands, headboards, feature walls, sideboards, furniture hacks, glassware, side tables, you name it. Fluting, also known as reading, evokes classical elements. Think ancient Greek columns. And adds subtle touches of luxury to your home while also adding texture. Depending on your needs, you can have small gaps between your flutes to add texture and contrast, or you can use more spaced out fluting to create like a softer, more soothing effect. What's not to love about a fluted surface? Okay, depending on where you put it, it may be a little annoying to clean, but it's fine. The real beauty of the fluted finish is that it basically looks good pretty much anywhere. And the other huge bonus to this trend is the fact that it's very easy to DIY. And I think that's part of the reason why this trend is gaining so much traction because so many people are just able to incorporate it without having to spend a lot of money. However you decide to incorporate fluted surfaces you can be sure that it's gonna look beautiful and it's gonna really add that beautiful textural detailing into your space. Speaking of classical elements, let's talk about marble. Marble obviously has been around for centuries, we all know that, but the marble trend that we're seeing right now is the use of very bold, high contrast veining. So for example, marbles like Calacatta Monet, Paonazzo, and Arabescato. This type of marble is much more expensive and rare than your standard Carrara marble, and here's why. As you can see, Carrara marble is a bit muddier and it's not pure white. Whereas Calacatta marble has a much cleaner veining and a crisp white background. The way it works is that the more distinct and uniform the veining, the more expensive the slab is. And the whiter the background, the more expensive the slab as well. In kitchens and bathrooms, we're seeing the use of a lot of large single slabs. Single slab backsplashes and waterfall islands are super popular, but I've even seen this type of marble used on floors, stairs, sinks, and mirrors. So here's what I think about this trend. I think it's beautiful, but I would recommend that before you spend a lot of money on a very expensive piece of marble, really ask yourself, is this distinct look something that you think you can live with for the next 10, 15, 20 years? If the answer is yes, that's absolutely great, go for it. If you're not sure, then I would maybe tread a little bit more carefully. I think it's important to remember that a lot of these trends that we're seeing are stemming from the spaces of very, very wealthy people who won't necessarily even think twice before entirely renovating their kitchen every other year. I mean, that's not always the case, but often it is. And a lot of the times, again, not always true, but often they're not even paying for their materials because obviously brands are very eager to get their products out in front of the biggest audiences possible and they wanna use the most influential people possible. It's just how the design world and the marketing world works. There's not necessarily anything wrong with that. I just think it's good for us to remember that most of us normal people, when we renovate, we're stuck with our choices. So it's good to just really consider things before taking the plunge. There's definitely a tendency right now in the design world to move away from perfectly manicured surfaces to more irregular, imperfect surfaces. So as a result, the use of handmade tiles like Zalige tiles or Moroccan tiles is a trend that is really exploding right now. Zalige tiles are very often taking the place nowadays of your standard perfectly cut subway tile for a more lived in, relaxed look. The liege come in all shapes, sizes, finishes, and colors, and these gorgeous tiles really bring in that lovely, raw, handmade artisan vibe. The most popular size at the moment seems to be the small 4x4 squares, but also the 2x6 format is popular as well. It's worth mentioning that Zalige tiles are quite a bit more expensive than regular tiles and also they don't install quite like normal tiles so you really gotta do your homework if it's an element that you plan on bringing into your home. I wrote a super in-depth article all about Zalige tiles because I love them and I would really love to be able to use them in my home one day as well. So if you're thinking of using them in your home then definitely give that a read. It's on my blog poshpennies.com and I'll link it somewhere here for you as well. Thanks for watching today, I highly appreciate it and if you got this far, chances are you might enjoy watching another one of my videos as well. In any case, definitely subscribe so that we can hang out again next time. Thanks! Bye!